all television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. White House seeks to cut billions in funding for United Nations. U.S. retreat from U.N. could mark a breakdown of the international humanitarian system as we know it. And this is from ForeignPolicy.com. Foreign Policy was created by Samuel Huntington, who worked with Zbigniew Brzezinski, the author of The Grand Chessboard in the Carter Administration, and even wrote books with Brzezinski, who was the co-founder of the Trilateral Commission, along with David Rockefeller, such as Political Power, USA, USSR, in 1977. The left-right paradigm is how they brainwash the Americans into taking part in the formulation of the one world system without even knowing it. The Democratic Party in the United States was taken over by the Stalinists in 1933 at the beginning of the FDR administration by Bela Moskovitz. She was the agent used to bring it about who mysteriously died right at the beginning of the FDR administration, which is obviously a benchmark in the formulation of the one world system through the hidden dynasty of politics. In 1980, the Trotskyites took over the right wing, the Republican Party, and so that's why you see this war between the left and the right. It's two wings of the communist system, and no matter who wins, the outcome is the same. Global communism. Tex Mars wrote in his book Circle of Intrigue on page 126 that we would be well advised to heed the sage words of Antony Sutton, a conspiratorial authority who in his excellent book America's Secret Establishment advised, above all, the reader must put to one side the descriptive cliches of left and right, liberal and conservative, communist and fascist, even Republican and Democrat. They are confusing in our context unless seen as essential elements in a game plan. Rather than employ such artificial and confusing terms, Sutton cautions readers that they should instead always focus their attention on the process of politics and world affairs. It is, he warns, the Hegelian dialectic process which is being used to bring about a society in which the state is absolute, i.e. all-powerful. We must also understand that Hegel's theories were not new. The Greeks proposed similar theories, as did the ancient Chinese. The conflict of opposites propelling man's destiny is also essentially the same system that atheist Charles Darwin borrowed to propose his theory of evolution. Darwin's flawed theory held that there is the organism, the thesis, which clashes with the opposing forces of nature, the antithesis, out of this conflict and the resulting chaos comes a new order of things, a new perfected species, the synthesis. That, in essence, is Darwin's unscientific and illogical theory. The adherence of Darwinism, supported by the Rockefeller and Rothschild-designed educational establishment, there's your hidden dynasty of education, cling tenaciously to the discredited theory of evolution, because if they face up to the fact that Darwin was wrong, the whole house of cards of the Illuminati might come crashing down. So with that in mind, let's read this article from ForeignPolicy.com, created by Samuel Huntington, who worked with Zbigniew Brzezinski during the Carter administration who created the Trilateral Commission. State Department staffers have been instructed to seek cuts in excess of 50% in U.S. funding for U.N. programs, signaling an unprecedented retreat by President Donald Trump's administration which includes Wilbur Ross, a former Rothschild Incorporated employee, McMaster, who's in the CFR, and Kenneth Juster from both the CFR and the Trilateral Commission. So these cuts in excess of 50% in U.S. funding for U.N. programs signal an unprecedented retreat by Trump's administration from international operations that keep the peace, provide vaccines for children, don't let that throw you off, remember the Hegelian dialectic, and don't forget who created this foreign policy group, Samuel Huntington, who worked with Brzezinski, co-founder of the Trilateral Commission, along with David Rockefeller. The Rockefellers even donated the land that the UN headquarters is on. That's a documented fact. Look it up. The push for such draconian measures comes as the White House is scheduled on Thursday to release its 2018 budget proposal, which is expected to include cuts up to 37% for spending on the State Department. 
The U.S. Agency for International Development and other foreign assistance programs, including the United Nations, in next year's budget, the United States spends about $10 billion a year on the United Nations. It remains unclear whether the full extent of the steeper U.N. cuts will be reflected in the 2018 budget, which will be prepared by the White House Office of Management and Budget, or whether, as Secretary of State Rex Tillerson from ExxonMobil, which originally was Standard Oil, the initials of Standard Oil are S and O, and then it became SO, and then it became Exxon. The cuts would be phased in over the coming three years. One official close to the Trump administration said Tillerson has been given flexibility to decide how the cuts would be distributed. On March 9th in New York, U.S. diplomats in a closed-door meeting warned key U.N. members, including wealthy donors from Europe, Japan, and South Korea, to expect a big financial constraint on U.S. spending at the United Nations, said one European diplomat. There are rumors of big cuts to the State Department budget, but again, on our side, no figures, the diplomat said. And at the same time, you have the Federal Reserve raising interest rates for the third time since the financial crisis, for the third time in 10 years. And there you have the hidden dynasty of economics. There are four hidden dynasties, education, which we covered earlier, economics, set up in 1913 with the Federal Reserve Act, education began in 1830, which was when Adam Weishaupt died, the original architect of the Illuminati's plan for world domination. The Illuminati are the Kenites, the synagogue of Satan that you can read of in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. They formulate the one world political system, carrying out the negative part of God's plan. But first, they have to get rid of the old order, as they call it. And on the last page of the Grand Chessboard by Zbigniew Brzezinski, you have that plan mapped out for you. The upgrading of the existing and increasingly antiquated UN structures. That's the plan. And in the course of the next several decades, a functioning structure of global cooperation, this was written in 1997, based on geopolitical realities, could thus emerge, meaning the final one world political system has not emerged yet. But in the course of the next several decades, a functioning structure of global cooperation, so the UN provides the skeletal structure for the actual New World Order, based on geopolitical realities, could thus emerge, yet future, and gradually assume the mantle of the world's current region, which has for the time being assumed the burden of responsibility for world stability and peace. Geostrategic success in that cause would represent a fitting legacy of America's role as the first, only, and last truly global superpower. So they're going to use the might of America to bring about this one world system. But first, they have to get rid of the old order, and that's the great horn of the he-goat that you can read of in Daniel chapter 8. That great horn is broken, and that's the same thing as Daniel chapter 11 Verse 20, the one who sends out a razor of taxes, remember the global carbon tax, went into effect just before Trump was elected president, who is undoubtedly a tool of the Zionists to bring about their plan for a one-world government. It's the negative part of God's plan. Notice the symbolism that they used in their Purim parade. There you have Donald Trump tied up. The message the Kenites are broadcasting there is, we are in control of your president. He's owned and operated by the Zionists, by the Illuminati. Would you think God was just going to press pause on the plan for the end to be brought about here in this final generation, which began in 1948? And there you have the hidden dynasty of religion with the recognition of the state of Israel. Kenite occupied Israel. So in 1830... The hidden dynasty of education was implemented along with the rapture theory. In 1913, the hidden dynasty of economics with the Federal Reserve. And in 1945, the UN was founded. There's your hidden dynasty of politics. And then in 1948, the hidden dynasty of religion with Kenite-occupied Israel coming into being as well as the World Council of Churches. And there you have the first four trumpets of the book of Revelation. The fifth trumpet began to sound in 1969, but five means grace, meaning we're in a grace period and the woe of the fifth trumpet has yet to transpire. That's when Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and only then does the real new world order emerge. 
having seven heads and ten horns. And those ten horns are ten supernatural angels, fallen angels that are cast out of heaven with Satan, who reign one hour with the beast, the hour of temptation, which was seven years, but it's been shortened to a five-month period. So instead of two three-and-a-half-year segments of the hour of temptation, you have two two two-and-a-half-month periods, first with the political beast of Revelation 13, which receives a deadly wound after which Satan appears in Jerusalem as the false Christ at the woe of the sixth trumpet, and then two and a half months later the true Christ returns at the last trump, the trump of God, the seventh trumpet, at the woe of the seventh trumpet. So understand the three woe trumpets and you'll have no problem understanding how the end shall be. It's five months and it begins with Satan and his angels being cast from heaven unto the earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet. That's when that one world political system finally emerges. But before then, the great horn of the he-goat must be broken. And as we've covered many times, and you can read the documentation for yourself why I think this in the Daniel 11 hypothesis, the great horn of the he-goat is the United Nations. So as it's written in Daniel chapter 8, verse 8, Therefore the he-goat wax very great, the he-goat being the Kenite nation, not a geographical location, but the shadow government of the Kenites, the Illuminati. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, that's the United Nations, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. The four winds of heaven always means that five-month-long hour of temptation. So after the great horn, the United Nations was broken, the woe of the fifth trumpet transpired, which is when Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. This is the lion, bear, leopard, and Daniel's fourth beast in Daniel chapter 7. Daniel's fourth beast being the supernatural, who will not be on earth until that time. That's how you know it doesn't happen until the woe of the fifth trumpet, because they're only here for five months. And out of one of them, out of one of the four notable ones, out of the fourth beast, because that's the supernatural, came forth a little horn. After the one world political system is wounded to death, Satan shall appear as the false Christ at the woe of the sixth trumpet. This happens at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, 666, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. That's Jerusalem, where Satan shall appear as the false Christ, as Christ warned us of in Mark 13, Matthew 24, as well as many other places. Paul wrote of it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice in Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, a half-hour silence in heaven is written of there. And what's half of five months? It's two and a half months. And the silence is the silence of those under the altar that you can read of in the fifth seal in Revelation chapter 6. They're crying out to God, how long until you avenge our blood that was shed upon the earth? So once Satan appears, there's silence in heaven because they're no longer asking that because their fellow servants are being delivered up to death, which is one of Satan's names. Not killed literally, but death is one of Satan's names. And God's elect who know the truth, who have the seal of God in their forehead, will refuse to worship Satan because they know who he is and they will be delivered up at which time the Holy Spirit will speak through them. You have a perfect example of that in Acts chapter 2 as well as Daniel chapter 3. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to worship anything but God. They refused to worship that image that Nebuchadnezzar, a type of Antichrist, set up. And then Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the fiery furnace. And when they came out, they weren't even singed. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Why? Because God protected them, as it's written in Luke chapter 21. Not one hair on your head shall perish. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about here, get into your Father's Word now. Don't take my word for anything. Get into your Father's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse, prayerfully asking God for understanding, for wisdom, and document these things for yourself. And as Christ said in the last verse of Mark chapter 13, watch.